Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, pag-uusapan natin kung paano gamitin ang Excel para i-compute ang one-way analysis of variance. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. One-way analysis of variance or ANOVA ay ginagamit kapag ang main SOP natin ay significant difference on a variable when the respondents are grouped according to three or more categories. Para siyang independent t-test, pero dito, more than two groups yung kinoconsider at a time. Kung ang decision sa dulo ay reject the null hypothesis, ibig sabihin may significant difference ang inyong variable, kailangan natin gumawa ng post-hoc test. Yung post-hoc test, yung nagsasabi kung alin sa mga variables na involved ang may significant difference sa isa't isa. Kasi di ba ang analysis of variance parang involved dyan yung group 1, group 2, group 3 tapos tiniting na natin yung significant difference sa kanila. Kung sinabi na accept the null hypothesis at walang significant difference, edi eh stop na tayo doon. Pero kung masabi na we have to reject the null hypothesis at merong significant difference sa kanila, kailangan nating malaman saan yung significant difference. Between group 1 and group 2 ba? O between group 1 and group 3? O baka naman between group 2 and group 3? We have to identify where that difference is para makumpleto yung idea ng analysis of variance. Again, ginagamit ang post hoc kapag reject the null hypothesis ang naging decision sa dulo. Paano ginagawa ang post hoc? You will take two groups at a time, tapos i-independent t-test mo sila. So sabihin natin na kapag ANOVA ka, tapos na-reject mo yung null hypothesis, and then ipapair up mo. Yung group 1 at group 2, gamitan ng independent t-test. Kapag accept the null hypothesis doon, ibig sabihin hindi group 1 and group 2 ang nakapagpa-reject the null hypothesis sa ANOVA. So pili ka ng ibang pairing. Sabihin naman natin group 1 and group 3. Tingnan mo yung kanilang t-test. Kapag wala pa rin significant difference doon, and then you have to perform the t-test para sa group 2 and group 3. At kapag yon ang nag-reject the null hypothesis, ibig sabihin yung group 2 at group 3 yung nagbibigay o nagpapakita ng significant difference, kaya naging ganun yung result ng ANOVA. For example, Tinitingnan natin yung perception ng STEM versus perception ng Youngs versus perception ng ABM students. Kaya tayo gagamit ng ANOVA kasi more than two groups yung involved. O kaya naman, in terms of cluster or location, yung mga perception sa barangay 1, pareho ba sa barangay 2, pareho ba sa barangay 3, pareho ba sa barangay 4. Perception of grade 7 versus perception of grade 8 versus perception of grade 9. Basta dito, tandaan nyo, significant difference kung yung mga respondents ay gugrupo natin sa 3 or more groups. Ang p-value kapag mas malaki kaysa sa alpha, ganun pa din, we have to accept the null hypothesis. Pero kung mas maliit kaysa alpha, we have to reject the null hypothesis and consider doing the post hoc test. This is a sample SOP na gagamitan natin ng analysis of variance na one way. What is the demographic profile ng respondents in terms of grade level? Ano yung perception nila sa factors affecting their stress in terms of academic factor and environmental factor? Tapos titingnan natin kung may significant difference ba sa view ng respondents tungkol sa kanilang factors affecting their stress level kung igugrupo natin sila in terms of grade level. So dito ang involved ay grade 7, grade 8, grade 9, and grade 10. Dahil may apat tayong grade level, definitely we will use ANOVA one way. Before we proceed sa dataset, pakita ko lang yung magiging table natin. Una, summary of statistic muna for academic factor per grade level. So ito, academic factor muna, yung unang subpart ng SOP2. Igogroup natin siya per grade level, tapos yung statistic lang nila. Yung count, yung sum, yung average, at yung variance. Lahat ng nandito sa table 6, 2 decimal numbers. Next, table 7, kung mapapansin ninyo, continuous yung numbering ng table. Ito naman yung significant difference na, or yung sinasagot na yung SOP, number 3, pero academic factor lang kapag nakagroup according to grade level. Ito yung itsura ng pagre-report natin. So, meron tayong 
source of variation, laging ganyan yung laman ng first column. Tapos ganyan yung between and within groups, tapos may total. Yung second column ay tungkol sa SS or sum of squares. Yung BF ay degrees of freedom, tapos yung MS ay yung mean square. Yung F ay yung mismong ANOVA value at yung p-value yung hahanapan natin at i-compare natin sa alpha or yung level of significance natin. And then definitely we have the decision na nakabase sa ating p-value. Lahat ng yan except for the decision ay ilalabas or bibigay sa inyo ng Excel. So syempre ito ay pang academic factor. Meron pa tayong table 8. Para sa environmental factor naman at table 9 para sa significant difference ng environmental factor kapag nakagroup sila according to grade level. So dito medyo may karamihan na table. Depende sa subparts mo ng SOP. Kung meron kang tatlong parts ng SOP, expect mo na meron ka pang table 10 at table 11. Pero dahil dalawa nga lang tayo, academic at environmental, hanggang dyan lang yung ating table. We now move to the data set at ipapakita ko na sa inyo kung paano gamitin ang ANOVA sa Excel. Ang nakikita nyo ngayon na file ay yung Excel file na naglalaman ng responses natin from respondent number 1 until respondent number 68. Tapos nasa second column yung grade level and dito yung mga sagot nila sa Likert scale. Uh, ito yung academic factor, question 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is for academic factor, tapos environmental factor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nakikita nyo dito may additional column para sa average. So, kukuhanin natin yung average ng per respondent. Pero bago natin gawin yun, kailangan muna natin isort out yung grade level nila. So, again, i-highlight natin itong grade level ng number 1 hanggang grade level ng number 68. Ikiklik natin itong sort and filter, and then sort from A to Z, expand the selection, and then sort. Ang gagawin niya, pinagsama-sama niya lahat ng grade 10, tapos insert tayo ng isang row. Lahat ng grade 7, again, insert tayo ng row para lang magkaroon ng distinction. And then ito yung mga grade 8, tapos yung grade 9. So, ang gagawin natin, i-average natin yan per respondent kung ano yung naging sagot nila. So, again, we will use this function, average, open parenthesis, tapos i-highlight natin itong row na ito, yung response niya mula sa statement 1 hanggang statement 5. Tapos, close parenthesis, enter. Yan yung average ni respondent 6 na grade 10 sa sagot niya sa academic factor. At yan ay idadrag lang natin. Ibig sabihin, kukopyahin natin yung kanyang formula. Kung mapapansin nyo dito, pag pinoint ko yung aking cursor, sa lower right corner ng cell, magiging plus sign siya. Ikiklik ko yan, tapos idadrag ko or i-highlight ko hanggang dito sa 67 response. Or dun sa dulo. We do the same for environmental factor. Again, equals average, open parenthesis, and then highlight the cell, close parenthesis, and then enter. Itutok yung cursor dun sa lower right corner ng cell para maging plus sign siya. And then i-click, i-drag hanggang sa dulong response. So, nakuha na natin yung average ng responses ng grade 10, grade 7, grade 8, and grade 9. Dito sa baba, mag-prepare tayo ng another table. Andito yung academic factor, tapos nakasort out yung grade 7. Ikakopy natin lahat ng responses dito or yung mga average lang nakakakompute natin. Same goes with grade 8, grade 9, and grade 10. Ganon din dito sa kabila for environmental factor. So, simulan natin dito sa nasa taas na grade 10 academic factor. So, highlight lang natin yan, tapos copy. Nasa grade 10 yan, tapos 
Space, special tayo. Tapos, values. Ganon din ang gawin natin para sa next set. For grade 7 naman. Again, copy. Tapos, right-click, paste special, and values. Next, we have grade 8. Copy and paste special. Ito na lang, oh, may shortcut siya, yung paste option na may 1, 2, 3 sa baba. It means values. And finally, grade 9. Let's do the same for environmental factor. Simula natin si grade 10. Next, we have grade 7. Ito yung grade 8. And then we'll do the same for grade 9. So select and then copy. And paste special values. So, nakuha na natin yung mga corresponding scores. Nasort na natin siya for grade level. Now is the time for us to use ANOVA. So, again, galing to sa analysis tool pack na ating in-install. You click data and then dito makikita nyo ang data analysis. When the dialog box opens up, click ANOVA single factor tapos OK. Ang input range ay itong magkakasama na na grade 9. So, yan yung dahilan kung bakit kailangan nakasort na siya per grade level at tabi-tabi siya. Kasi ang gusto ni Excel na ANOVA, kailangan ganyan yung format. I-click natin itong labels in the first row kasi yung first row natin yung label niya na grade 7, 8, 9, and 10. Tapos, ang alpha natin is 0 0.05 unless otherwise may ibang sinabi ang inyong research teacher. And then, okay na yan, new worksheet lie, tapos, okay. Excel will create another sheet na nandun na yung mga summary na kailangan natin at yung ating mga SS, DF, MS, uh, F value, and P value. Kakopy na lang natin yung mga yan, itong entries na to, pero i-round off nga natin sa second decimal number. Tapos, ito ay i-round off natin sa third decimal number. Click nyo lang to, Itong nasa home tab, tapos number, tapos yung decrease decimal para maging tatlong decimal number siya. So, ganun din yung gagawin natin dito sa iba. So, next, we go back to the sheet ng one-way ANOVA. Tapos, gawin naman natin yung sa environmental factor. Para lang data, data analysis, ANOVA single factor, tapos OK. Ang input range natin dito, kiklik natin yung arrow, tapos we will select this part. Yung arrow ulit. Column yan, tapos labels in the first row, 0 0.05, new worksheet line. Okay. Nag-create siya ng panibagong sheet at ito naman yung ANOVA single factor para sa environmental factor. Again, ito yung kokopyahin natin sa summary ng environmental factor at sa ANOVA table ng environmental factor. I-round off natin itong values na to sa second decimal number. Tapos ito ay sa third decimal number.
same goes with these values. And then, we're ready to go. I-report na natin ang naging result nito for environmental factor at ito para sa academic factor sa ating table. So, ito yung summary ng ating statistics para sa academic factor per grade level. Tapos, ito yung F table or yung ANOVA table para sa academic factors. So, definitely, isang paragraph sa baba ng table 6 para i-discuss yung laman ng table 6. Tapos, ganun din, another paragraph sa baba ng table 7 para i-discuss yung naging resulta ng table 7. Dahil accept doon ang hypothesis tayo because mas malaki yung p-value kaysa sa ating alpha na 0 0.05, definitely we will accept the null hypothesis. Hindi tayo magpo-post hoc kasi nagpo-post hoc lang kapag reject. Ito naman yung para sa environmental factors per grade level. Summary of statistics at table ng significant difference gamit yung ANOVA. Still, the p-value is greater than the alpha. That's why we will accept the null hypothesis. So that's it kung paano natin gawin yung ANOVA sa MS Excel. Just make sure na may kasunod na textual information or textual explanation after ng table. Thank you for watching! If you learned from this video, please give it a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon. See you on our next video!